So let's look at the following assumption that is very often used in physics. So when objects are falling very close to the surface of the Earth and their velocity is relatively small, these objects are accelerating at the same exact rate regardless of their shape, size, or mass. Now this assumption comes from the fact that we neglect air resistance. Now air resistance is a real thing. Air resistance exists and it's a byproduct of the fact that our atmosphere, our air, is composed of many different types of molecules, compounds, and atoms. For example, CO2, O2, N2, and all these molecules together play a role to create resistance for our falling objects. For example, if I take a very heavy bowling ball and I take a, a flat piece of paper and I let go, the bowling ball will clearly reach the ground first because it has a higher mass and therefore a larger momentum. In other words, this bowling ball will be able to fall easier. It will accelerate faster because these molecules in the air will not be able to resist this bowling ball as much as they will be able to resist this flat piece of paper that has a much larger surface. So once again, with air resistance, heavier objects are able to accelerate faster than lighter ones. But in a vacuum, if we completely remove all the air molecules, so the absence of air resistance, all objects accelerate with the same uniform acceleration and at the surface of the earth we make that we calculate our acceleration to be 9.80 meters per second squared notice that this only works at the surface of the earth so once again if we completely remove all the molecules, if we create a vacuum, there will be no air resistance. And so this flat sheet of paper at the bowling ball will reach the ground at the same exact time because they will accelerate with the same acceleration. So since objects in free fall accelerate uniformly because we make the assumption that there is no air resistance, we can use the equations to solve different problems. These are the four equations on the uniform acceleration, except now we're not working along the x-axis, we're, we're working along the y-axis. So, A, this is our equation, we replace our acceleration A with G, and it's known as our gravitational constant. So our acceleration equals our g, our gravitational constant, and it's equal to 9.8 meters per second squared. So every second our velocity of the object increases by the amount 9.8 meters per second squared. So these are the four equations that we can use. Notice that we replace the a's with g's and we replace the x's and x naughts with y's and y naught because now we're working along the y direction. So let's do one example. Suppose we drop a ball from a cliff 70 meters high. How far will it fall or how far has it fallen after one second and after three seconds. So, here's our cliff, we take our, uh, we take our ball, we let go of the ball, and after one second, what is the distance it has traveled? So, our y naught y initial is zero meters, we want to find the final y. So let's use this equation here. So we know what our v initial is, our v naught is zero, we know that this is zero, so we are simply left with y equals one half, times 9.80 meters per second squared because we're making the assumption there is no air resistance so we neglect air resistance so we uh, we calculate this and we get 4.90 meters what about after three seconds so we use the same exact formula except now instead of plugging in one second we plug in three seconds so now we get nine times 9.8 times 0.5, we get 44.1 meters. So after three seconds, our ball has fallen a distance of 44.1 meters.